Hey guys, Evan here. How are you all doing? So about two days ago guys, Lizard announced the alpha patch notes for Warlords of Draenor. Now they basically made a big massive wall of text that you guys can go through if you really want to. But I've gone to the trouble of actually taking out all the PvP changes that I feel are the most warranted to note. So I'm going to list them off really quickly. The changes and the additions and removals in the game. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into detail about them, but I will go more into detail about the warrior and rogue changes made to both classes. So the first change is racial traits have been rebalanced, so now all races have a single combat performance. The amount of crowd control in the game primary and PvP has been drastically reduced. Many crowd control abilities have been removed, and many diminishing return categories are now merged together. The amount of instant healing in the game has also been toned down giving cast times to several instant cast heals. Interrupts no longer silence the target, but will just interrupt now, but silence effects should still work as they normally did. Stats no longer increase crit, but instead every class now has a 5% increased base crit. Previous agility orders will also gain a new passive build that increases the crit chance by 10%. Professions no longer have a combat benefit perks tied to them. Additions and removals from the game. Hit and Expertise has been removed, but there's still a 3% base parry and a 6% base parry for tanks. Base resilience has been reduced to 0% guys. This is going to make it so PvE people will have a lot harder time killing us, which is the way it should be. Bad Fatigue has been removed from the game. Critical damage and critical heals in PvP combat now deal 150% of normal spell ability effects, down from 200. Disarms have been removed from the game. We can Blow's debuff has been removed from all DPS specs. It's now only available to tanks. Spells and abilities that slow casting slash attack speed have been removed from the game. Many facing requirements have been removed. Rogue's ambush no longer requires the rogue to be behind the target. And backstab can be used at either side of the target or behind, but not in front. Okay, so guys, next up we're going to talk about the warrior changes. Now keep in mind before I list off any of these changes that every class in the game, every spec class in the game has had a lot of changes made to them. They've had a lot of nerfs and they've had a lot of buffs. So there is going to be nerfs and buffs in this list, but don't take everything here for as it is because it's, this is just the alpha and the Blizzard may decide to change a lot of this. I'm just going to give you guys my thoughts on it as we go through it. A recklessness now increases critical strike chance by 15% down from 30% and also increases critical strike damage by 10% up from 0%. Now that's both a buff and a nerf because the next change is skull banner has been removed. So we're losing 10% increased crit but what they've kind of done is they've put skull banner as part of recklessness and reduced it by 10%. Which is still a good change because it just means we don't have to put a banner down now for that. And recklessness, the increased crit gone down to by 15%. It's still okay because at the end of the day, they're, as I said before, they increased 5% crit base for every class. So it's probably like it's 10% maybe. But you never know with the gear, we might have a lot of crit on the gear, stuff like that, when we come to the actual beta. So we'll see how that goes. Heroic Troll now has a 6 second cooldown, down from 30 seconds, but now it's a 15 minimum yard range. I guess this is going to help us do a little bit more range damage. It won't really matter too much though. Haste now reduced the global cooldown, so Mortal Strike, Bloodthirst, Shield Slam and Thunderclap. I can see this being a really good change for RBGs if you stack haste. You can just Thunderclap away and keep on everything, that'd be pretty nasty. But as regards to Mortal Strike, I'm not too sure. We'll see, we can't judge too hastily yet. Be Did you get that pun, hastily? <laughs> but yeah, we can't judge too hastily yet. Because at the end of the day, a lot of this may change. I mean, if we can get Thunderclap down to a one second and, and Mortal Strike down to a one second, haste may very well be worth stacking, guys. The next one is Second Wind, no longer directly heals the warrior. This is the one people have been worried about. Second Wind no longer really heal, directly heals the warrior while active. Instead, Second Wind grants the warrior 10% leech life while active. 
which caused the warrior to heal for 10% of the damage and healing done by the warrior while active. Now what you have to remember is you're also going to have your bleed on the target. So your bleed combined with your damage combined with your auto attacks, that should probably give you, if you still put it into current game now, will give you say about 20k ticks. And remember they remove, remove battle fatigue from the game so 20k ticks right now will be pretty damn good actually. Would be would be pretty damn good, especially combined with defensives. It just means you have to attack rather than running away. It just it's basically forcing us offensive. It's I don't know if it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing or not. But at the end of the day, warriors used to be used in rage regeneration. So if it all fails and goes to crap, going back to re rage regeneration is not the worst thing in the world. The next one is blade storm. No longer uses the ability of shout while active. So basically you can't use fears or anything like that, which is going to be a bit annoying, but it's all good, it's all good. Deep wounds now last 15 seconds until the target is healed to full health. This could be a bit annoying for us when we dig get healed to full health, but otherwise we should be fine. I mean, it, it just makes us keep damage on targets so they don't get to full health. Battle shout now lasts 1 hour and no longer generates rage. It, this isn't too bad because they're, they're, they're shuffling the rage cost of stuff around. So that's not going to affect us too much. Same with Berserker Rage no longer generates rage, but it doesn't increase physical damage dealt. Berserker stance has been removed from the game, which is was going to happen. You knew it was going to happen. Nobody uses Berserker stance. Cleave has been removed from the game. Commanding shout now lasts one hour and generates no rage like before. Demoralizing banner has been removed from the game. Now the thing is, Mocking Banner is still in the game, so a lot of people are worried about banners, but Mocking Banner is still in the game, so we'll still be able to use that to get our groups and stuff. Hamstring now is a passive ability that causes Mortal Strike, Bloodthirst, Revenge and Raging Blow to also reduce the target's movement speed by 50% for 15 seconds. Now as I said guys up above, Rage things getting shuffled around, we don't have to use Rage for Hamstring anymore, which is quite good. The next one is Rallying Cry no longer is available to Protection Warriors. Reckless this is now only available to Arms and Fury Warriors. Shattering Troll will no longer reduce the arrow from the target, which is a bit of a pain because that was nice to increase damage. It only does damage and breaks immunities. It's also no longer learned via any specialization, but instead now through a major glyph, Glyph of Diamond Troll. I don't know if people are going to glyph for it or not, but let's see how it goes. Pro has been removed from the game, so you can no longer use your little daggers. So I guess the six second throw is going to come into good effect when rogues are trying to kite you and stuff like that. The next change, Thunderclap is no longer available to Fury Warriors. This is going to drastically reduce the damage of Fury Warriors and RBGs and a bit of a pain for them, but hey, what can you do? Charge now roots the target instead of stunning it. Root does not affect or diminish with any other roots. But I think this is kind of a nerf, guys, because warriors need that charge to interrupt, interrupt a lot of the healer's casts, and it's going to be more of a pain. But hey, what can you do? You may find yourself specking for Warbringer, because Warbringer now caused the charge to stun for 1.5 seconds. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to diminish with Shockwave or not. If it does, then it's going to be more of a pain. But hey, what can you do? Maybe you could focus charge the healer, pummel, and then just leap back over, something like that. Intimidating show as now is a six second duration of PvP, down from eight seconds. This isn't too much of a nerf because at the end of the day, warriors never really got their full eight seconds flare unless they were using it to actually CC the healer or something like that. Warwind is now only available to Fury Warriors. This means basically Warwind is gonna be like the Thunderclap version fury warriors but hey that's a that's a worth no change all in all i would say warriors are in a really good strong place i mean yeah there's a few changes that i didn't like but most of the changes have been a good positive thing and we're going to see how world drainer turns out but i feel that warriors are in a strong place and we shouldn't worry too much the next change is the rogue changes trickster trade now has no energy cost and no longer increases damage caused by the target for 15 percent this is going to be a PvE change, basically no one's going to use tricks to trade anymore in PvP because there's no point. This is a good thing though because it basically means they're going against RMP, they're not going to do ridiculously stupid damage. 
Next shiny is to Assassin Resolve. It not longer requires staggers to function because next shiny after that, Mute Lake can be now used with fist weapons and one handed swords, dealing 137% weapon damage instead of 200. But when used with weapons like daggers, it deals 200% weapon damage. The next change is being to dispatch. Just like Mute Lake, you can now use one handed fist weapons and swords. The now deals 320% weapon damage instead of 480 when used instead of daggers. Next change after that is the Sinister Strike now loads 188% weapon damage when used with dagger instead of 130. Hmm, so you may see a lot more combat rows using daggers. That's that's kind of funny. <laughs> Next change is to Subterfuge, now allows you to use abilities that require stealth for 3 seconds after leaving stealth, instead of actually staying stealthy for 3 seconds. So this just means that it's just like the other two, but you're just gonna be able to use your ambush like you were as if you were in Shadow Dance or something. The next change is to the Sam Trap, the Sam Trap has now been removed, and I think it's because hunters have lost an awful lot of their CC abilities, so it will be unfair to leave that in because they'll only have trap anyways now. The next change has been to rupture. Rupture no longer available to combat rogues. Which is probably a good thing because combat is more based on physical damage than bleeds to be honest. Shadow blades has been removed from the game. This is a big challenge but it should be still fine. Shadow dance still was pretty good in Kata without having any shadow blades you know so it's all good the last change to rogues is paralytic poison is being removed and replaced with internal bleeding internal bleeding causes successful kidney shots to apply paralytic bleed effect for 12 seconds with damage increasing common points used so basically the more common points you use the more bleed it does i think i don't know if this is going to be a good change or a bad change but it seems to be a good old change because it's going to the extra two or three seconds you would have stunned the target anyways with parallel poison you're probably going to do a little bit more damage and i think it's going to make rogue burst a little bit more stronger but all in all the rogue changes i don't see any particular bad changes to rogues rogues are in a strong place just like warriors they're i think most classes in the game are in a strong place as regards to anything else so all in all i wouldn't say guys don't worry too much about warriors of Draenor. Everything in these patch notes are subject to change like I said before, but a lot of it's just going to be hold some good changes to the game. Don't be afraid of change because at the end of the day change is always a good thing. Change is needed. The game was suffering a lot. Mr. Mandari was probably the worst PvP season of the lot. I mean, it just... I believe that all of these changes that have been made in the game are going to be positive and the game is going to go forward and thrive a lot better than it has been in the past. So yeah guys, they were my thoughts on, on the changes for War of Draenor. I personally feel we're going to be, in, everyone's going to be in a good place in the expansion. I'm personally looking forward to it, but once the beta comes out guys, I'm going to try to get a lot more information for you guys and maybe may give you guys more updates on everything that's going along and I'm going to try to get my best to make sure I keep you guys updated on all of these changes so yeah anyways guys hope you guys enjoyed that and hopefully i helped you a little bit more as regards to the changes for the next expansion anyways guys this is evan now i love you all take care and i'll see you guys in the next one